Okay. I shot, this is my third feature, okay. and I shot my first one in 35 millimeter, and I shot my second one on Super 16. And just heading down. Yeah, you know, so a, down a, a, a slippery slope. Right, okay. and, and this one I shot in HD, mm -hmm. very willingly. In my opinion, and in I think my DP's opinion, yeah. uh, and hopefully my producer's opinion, it cost us more money to do it. Okay. It cost us more time. Okay. It was a wild distraction for the actors and for some crew members. In what shape or form? Because you have this video village, and as I said to these guys, earlier, mm -hmm. you know what every video village has? A video, uh, village idiot. Village idiot. Yeah. So they wanted and, to go look at places. Well, it, it, it fosters insecurity on the part of very talented crew people. Right. It fosters uh, the presence on set of a lot of producers and executive producers who normally wouldn't really know where to go, what to look they at. Wait, they now they can be on set and yeah. look at a television set. Oh. We had a very tight script. We had a wonderful script by a first-time screenwriter, and we shot what was on the written page. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's my opening statement. Okay. I think that's an incredible opening statement. So Sounds like your process is about, I know what my moment is. I discovered it in writing, I discovered it in rehearsal, and then I'm gonna take that moment and put it on film and I'm going to execute it this way. Absolutely. The look of a film, I mean, it's an aesthetic choice. I think that, and I'm very proud of the way our film looks. Yeah. Hopefully the rest of the people that see it here on Monday when it premieres will agree. Yeah. Aesthetically, not just from a budget standpoint, not just from um, you know an exigency standpoint, mm -hmm. is that you actually prefer. Oh, no, no. For me, function and aesthetic are inextricably tied. OK. OK, because I, I mean, I, I can't separate those things have not been able to separate those things based on making low budget films. And when I show up on set every day, not only do I have a shot list, not only do I know exactly what I want to get out of that scene or mm -hmm. those shots, but I find that I will almost never shoot more than two or three takes. Yeah. And the reason is, if I trust my actors, I believe in my actors, and I know what I want to get on film, if I haven't gotten it after three takes, mm -hmm. which means twice directing twice over, yeah. I know that I'll shoot 10 takes and I'll go back to the first take in the editing right. room. I just won't get it. So that's part of the discipline. But there's another element which is here's this little HD handheld camera. I'm going to be running around trying to capture the magic and the lightning. This should look and feel like something less than film, like something less than the dream state of the randomized particles that 35 millimeter film offer. This should look and feel like my bedroom. This should feel like, oh my god, I understand these people because that sound that's coming just a little bit off camera, that's a little bit lo-fi, that makes it feel a little bit more like that wedding video that I experienced. For me, mm -hmm. movies, mm -hmm. Are, bo are both an escape and they allow you to identify at the same time. True, I can't shoot on film and make a feature for $15,000. Right. You never could. You can go back to El Mariachi, which you know the big hype was it was made for $9,000, exactly. You know, donating blood at blood banks. Right. But the bottom line is before it was readied for movie theaters, yeah. you know, yeah, hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars was spent yeah. even at, in those days. So why isn't digital technology a good thing for the people who want to make a feature for under $200,000? I would rather have the, the, fewer, small, the, the fewer number of high quality movies. And the reason for that is because when you make an attempt to or succeed in flooding the marketplace mm -hmm. and jading audiences and jading critics you with- don't get to see them. Oh, I disagree. The ones don't get seen. I, I disagree. And with digital technology, more people are getting to see them than ever. But I would just ask that you would appreciate and have some respect for the beauty that digital filmmaking can offer, be it not visual beauty, but is offering opportunities to young people to express and more importantly, find themselves through the process, which is different from your process, which is to have discovered it and to have executed it. You already know what you're doing. You're way beyond, you're doing great. Let somebody find that with this art form. Let them shoot and find and do it cheaply and let them fuck up cheaply and then eventually they will come around and then maybe they'll make movies that you appreciate. Well, I hope that uh, that time comes. I have a feeling when that kid is 32, even I won't be making films on film anymore. I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm, not, uh, I'm not in denial, I'm a realist. I understand that we are dealing with a technological future that's called digital and we're all gonna be making films digitally in the yeah. future. Um, I think I have huge respect for any filmmaker, particularly filmmakers who write and direct their own works, who manage to get any film made, forget about even seen, mm -hmm. get any film made, because at whatever budget level, if it's a work of quality, you only have to make a movie for one person, that's yourself. Good luck with the film that you have acted in this your year. movie showing Monday? Yes. Okay. Better be Yours is tonight. Strong argument. You better back that shit up. If it's, if it's too good, what am I going to do? It was shot in HD. Yeah, you're screwed. <laughs>